Welcome back for the Business for Detailers podcast. This is episode four, and today I'm sitting down with none other than Romy Nazar. He has one of the biggest online car detailing stores in Australia, Ultra Fine Car Care, and he runs a ceramic and graphene coating line called Kraken Coatings, and he has developed these from scratch. Some of the best coatings around, and I know this from personally using them myself. You are not going to want to miss out on this episode. We cover a ton of information from how he got started in the online business to the amount of cars that he's detailed, the type of cars that he details. We even go into window corrections, paint corrections, applying ceramic coatings proteins and all sorts in between you're not going to want to miss out on this episode there is a ton of knowledge and um, let's get straight into it all right Romy welcome to the show how you going thank you yeah very busy good but um, I'm, I'm very excited to be here especially with the main man with the one of the biggest <laughs> followings in uh, Australia and creeping up on the globe for sure, for sure, man. Let's have a good, let's have a chat. Let's get into it. So I guess, um, just tell us, Romy, like, tell us a bit about your story, your background, um, and how you, you know, got to where you are right now. Yeah. So Ultra Fine Car Care was actually, um, originally created, um, by two people and it was actually all the way back in 2012, um, my background actually has nothing to do with detailing and, and um, I was always a car enthusiast, of course, and I was always a sort of a um, into detailing my own cars and stuff, but um, never really, you know, into it uh, to the point where I was using a polishing machine and stuff from early days. But um, my background actually comes from engineering and IT. So mm. banking and um, specifically around server engineering, software security, and then into pre-sales uh, for software. But along the path, I um, gelled with one particular person in IT. He was one of the architects working with me. And we were always, you know, cleaning our cars and checking out, hey, man, what's the best products? And let's see this and let's have a check at that. And at one stage, I spent like, um, early 2000s, I spent $800 on a wax, a uh, little tub, right? Swiss wax. Um, wow. Local name <laughs> now. It was actually originally called Swiss Hole. Um, and, um, and he goes, oh, man, you're crazy. And I said, no, no, no you got to check this stuff out. And then, you know, you, you start accumulating all of these uh, products and all of a sudden I've got five grand worth of products. Anyway, we we were just sort of, um, you know, going back and forth with, you know, what the best products are. And then um, it, it came up to about 2011, 2012. And he's like, man, we're always talking about cleaning and doing this and that. We should we should start an online store. And I said, no, mm. what, are you, what are you talking about? And I said, he goes, man, we've got the brains to, you know, put together a, a, a website. That's easy. And let's just start, you know, doing a bit of reselling. We'll resell some of the Swiss fax stuff. And as a matter of fact, I originally um, started with Waxit, believe it or not. Um, I, I started getting products from them and reselling. And I was like a tiny drop in the ocean, um, especially considering where I am now. And, you know, the years progressed. We were probably about two years in and... We were just doing it on the side, Aaron, because we were still... I've only been technically unemployed from full-time IT for six years. Mm. Um, so, but within about a two, three-year period, I wanted more. Um, and I wanted to get into having my own brand in Australia and distributing and getting out and going to car meets, going to, you know, the the detailers and, and sort of you know, speaking to the guys. I wanted to know the best of the best. And you know how it is, Aaron. You want to sort of develop the fact of understanding, you know, how it all works and, you know, what's what's machine yeah. polishing about and so forth. So he had really no interest in that. He didn't really want to sort of get involved and, and sort of basically he wanted to just sort of be the guy that wanted to – you know, oh, I'm, I'm okay to fund it, Romy, but, you know, oh, I can't do the whole going out and about and I don't have time. I said, that's fine. Um, 
tell me what your price is or tell me what you want, we're done. Um, and then after that- True, so you bought them out of the company. Yeah, that was t- tiny yeah. amount. You know, we're only talking a couple of grand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So just- I'll just um just want to uh, like clarify. So right now, what you do is you own a company called Ultra Fine Car Care, yep. and you have a range of products, and you run an online store, and you also have your own ceramic coating product as well called Kraken, yep. and that's your main focus right now. You also do a bunch of trainings as well, so you coach one on one in person. You teach people how to. Um, detail the exterior of the car primarily paint corrections sandings and applying ceramic coatings as as well right so that's your sort of what you're doing at the moment right correct so we'll yeah, manage, yeah i manage three websites at the moment yeah um soon to be four um hopefully with wow. um, this pbf um we're looking at at the moment yeah uh, there's a lot on i've got um one full timer now that's been with me for three months um, probably coming up to four months, looking at possibly another full timer by the end of the year. Um, we're surrounded with my own contractors and I've got probably over 120, 130 detailers that I supply across the country. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And this is all based in Australia at the moment. Or are you international? Yeah. At the moment, I've, um, reached out a couple of, had a couple of, um, uh, Big, big, well-known detailers across the globe that have been interested um, with Kraken. So mm. I've sent out samples, and you know how it is, Aaron. You, it's like going fishing. Um, you, you know, you, you put your uh, you put your line out, and then you uh, mm. you wait. Um, the other big brand, obviously, that I, that I also run in Australia is Fenlab or Fine Lab. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Yeah, it's it's um it's it's keeping us very busy and obviously we've still got on top of all of that, we've still got our own customers that we look after for the you know, the cars that come in. Uh, yeah. So you still do you just still detailing cars as well? Yeah, primarily correction and codings. Yeah. Um I had an interesting one the other day that I was going to show you. Um, I'll, I'll share some photos with you because <laughs> it was one of those similar ones, like the you know some of the ones that I see in your um, in the real messed up ones. Mm. This was like single cab Hilux, fifteen twenty years old, no paint, like oh. no gloss on the paint, mud inside on the in in the in the floor carpet. I don't know. You don't even really call it carpet. Um, half the steering wheel has been like bitten off by like a dog, uh, <laughs> one of those ones. And I'm yeah. like, right, I can allocate two and a half hours and I'm done, 500 bucks, thanks a lot. Um, and they were blown away. Uh, and, they, and they're trying to sell it. So, you know, it's amazing because I went to put the extractor down on the floor. <laughs> Jeez, it was like pulling out mud. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those ones are uh, are tricky to deal with, um, but satisfying because you get quite a big transformation, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So how back you started this online shop, how 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 many years back are we talking? So Ultra Fine Car Care has technically been up and running since twenty thirteen, but yeah, it's been um let's say reformed. Um we originally I don't even know what um I don't even think it was originally in WordPress. Um now it's uh, full Shopify. It's got, you know, all the pretty bits about it. It's um we just spent I think the last 6 months for between Kraken and um Ultrafine I think we put in about 3 grand and that's just yeah. little add-ons. Mm even with Kraken now, we've got like the full web online warranty um, where it sends me a copy. The warranty can be transferred. I can I get a copy on the back end. I can go in and do any changes. The customer gets a copy. Yeah, uh, we, we're we're doing a lot more with the with the marketing as well. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, can we talk a little bit about? applying ceramic coatings and because there's a big debate in the detailing world about whether or not you need to be registered with a ceramic coating supplier or you know whether you can just go and buy the run of the mill off the online detail shop and you know do it yourself without any sort of training around it um, or registration you know like have been certified by that company what are your what are your thoughts on that 
Well, we offer both, Aaron. Mm. So, uh, as you know, you can get up to a three-year Kraken um, ceramic SI, SI2, um, which is a 10H. It's new generation. It's very strong. You've used it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going to have further chats about that after. But um, on the positive side, of course. But with relation to and, – and FenLab also offers their little um, 12-month light product. Now, mm. with those types of products, they're quite simple, quite easy to use. Um, a lot of the times, whilst we always talk about closed environments um, like garages and even workshops or even at you know home garages, um, we also, you know, with those products, there's a bit of leniency on them. So if, you know, if you, the flash time goes past and – you've got a high spot well as a home user you may just get a bit of a a bit of a hand polish and you might just you know take it off or yeah the concern might not be there because you know you you you're dealing with a ceramic a, a good grade product and and the high spot is is maybe inevitable for someone with no experience Mm. Now, those two products in my eyes, and just like the ones you can buy from Waxer and a number of other stores, um, I still feel that they have to be done in a in a closed environment and not sort of outdoors. Yeah. Uh, some people have done them outdoors. I mean, the FenLab light products uh, can be on a panel for up to 10 minutes before wiping it off because it is a high solid. So it's, it's right. very different. Um, but when we talk about the more certified um, style products and the more sort of professional grade, professional grade. Now, in my eyes, um, there is a reason for the certification, and there is a reason that I charge what I charge to bring on someone. It's not simply because I'm I want to sit here counting my money and saying, "Oh, I certified ten people this week." Um, Aaron, you know, it is because of the fact that they are more technical. They do require support at times, and there's things that can that can go wrong. And if they do go wrong with these products, um, there's a process that it's going to need. And it's not as if you can tell a DIY person, okay, yeah, no worries, just you know, use a two stage method to remove it. Um, it it gets a bit more technical. And with mm. my graphene certified products, they, if, you know, you don't concentrate and, and look at the humidity and the temperature and know your time frames, um, then you will end up with high spots or you, you know, it will just, just dry out on you. Um, yeah. And we've had a number of scenarios with even the professional detailers and I've basically been able to nail it and known the answers to their issues very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more of a skill to apply those advanced products, those professional grade products. And is that primarily because of the curing time and the humidity? Do you reckon those are the two main factors? I think so. Um, and obviously, um, the fact, again, going back to the fact that it has to be in a, a closed environment. Um, yeah. Also, knowing how much to apply for a certain area not doing too much of a large area. Um, yeah. You know, for yeah. me, it's, um, it's, it's a lot more easier because once you get uh, sort of uh, comfortable with the product, you can actually use um, uh, the right amount and you know, for example, you know, you have a quarter panel where the wheel arch is and you're like, okay, I'm going to coat that, get it off, that's done and you can move on. When it comes to big doors and bonnets, well, that's again where it comes down to the training and I specifically go through that and make sure they understand, you know, follow the lines and make sure with the graphene you you sort of apply it with this with this much area and go and, and go from there. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So let's just say I'm a beginner and I'm wanting to get into ceramic coatings and all I have at the moment is a mobile setup, right? What do you, what, what, how would you recommend going, you know, moving forward to get into, a, you know, the ceramic coating business? 
So going from um, sort of the DIY into the certified or just jumping into it regardless? I want to I want to increase my revenue. I want to build my services up and I want to start offering ceramic coatings, but I'm a mobile car detailer, you know, I'm I'm getting a bit of work each week or each month, but you know, I, I can really start to get bring on more work if I move into ceramic coatings, you know. Cuz that's a lot of a lot of guys want to do that, but they they just don't know how. And they think that you do have to have a a, a like a workshop to do it properly. No, that's not that's not necessarily true. And going back to the whole closing environment, if someone's willing to spend money as a customer for a coating, because most coatings in in Australia, are, you know, for a correction as well, so the detailer will know how to polish and and actually do yeah. some paint correction. Um, they will also be able to charge, you know, anywhere from a thousand dollars, I say up so you know the the thing that i can actually tell them is as long as they can do some correction work and they're yeah. able to actually show the client you know i'm coming over and doing a maintenance wash i might just get this door closed sorry aaron sorry Adam. Can you do that's all right or is that door closed sorry about that i just someone's downstairs polishing um <laughs> and i might just um i might just get uh i might let them know that well to upsell the customer if you're doing a maintenance wash on on a car that the customer loves and you're spending let's say 80 to 100 plus dollars getting you to come around every fortnight and so forth well then there's a very good indication that you know one they probably would have a garage for the car so that's a mm. that's a tick that's a first tick there um two they're willing to invest in the car to spend to pay you for maintenance wash um so there's a high chance you can upsell them on mm. the because they care so much for the car and you need to also show the car in the sunlight show them before you know i'm doing the safe wash and i'm doing all the right things however the car has swirl marks and and some light to medium scratches in it which um are able to be removed and then the paintwork is also going to be more protected with the coating. So yeah. that's sort of in a, in a nutshell how I would address it. And I have started and or help started just like you're doing, um, which has been fantastic for you. I've helped a lot of people from the ages, um, Aaron, from 17 all mm -hmm. the way up to close to my age, um, you know, early 40s, start their business. And most yeah. of the times, if they follow my direction in their first financial year, they'll be on over 100K. Yeah, yeah, 100%. It's not impossible, especially in a big city as well. And what what about the, like, saturation? Because at the moment, detailers are coming onto the market, like, you know, that's going out of fashion. It's just unbelievable how many new detailers are arising around the world. Um, and I guess like a big part of that is because of it's so easy to start this business. You know, you have a, you have a bucket of soapy water and a microfiber towel and you're a detailer, you know? So it's, it's, what are your thoughts on that? Like the, is, is the market getting oversaturated? I mean, it's obviously good for your online shop and you, you know, ceramic coating business. Um, but for other detailers who want to get started, you know, and get into this business, is, is that an issue? Well, the way I look at it and, and looking at the, um, the Sydney market alone, I estimate that there's every household has a, an average of two vehicles. Mm. Um, take, for example, the suburb I'm in at the moment. Within a kilometre, we've got six detailers. Um, we're, all, we're all quite busy. Um, I've got a detailer literally right next door to me. I got him to come in and take over the lease. Um, when you look at it, Aaron, from a perspective of is it is it too saturated? Is it is there enough detailers? Um, there's, I think they can go into categories. So you know, I look at it, the market and I say, well, forty five percent of detailers do not offer ceramic coatings because they're happy to earn six seven hundred dollars a day just by washing. Mm. Um, and not even going into the fact of 
extraction and all the technical stuff that you and I know. Um, and that's that puts them in a in a, in a sort of a, another category. And sometimes we'll even get referrals and and get some um, people to go out there. The other thing that I try and do in in my business for both Fenlab and Kraken is, um, and I hate to say control the market in a way, but I I try and say well, right if I've got someone, for example in in my area or in you'll probably used to know sutherland um in sydney mm. and i've got another person that is you know in the next suburb and the distance between them is is like a kilometer and they're both sort of working from home then i won't bring both of them on board unless they can have a mu- mutual written agreement between the two that they're mm. happy to help each other out and then they can grow their businesses together by using the same coding so that's something yeah. else I try and do, and it sort of is. Some people think of it; it's it's unfair, but I think it's actually being more fair and loyal to my brand. And it's actually just yesterday, actually, Aaron, I brought on someone in Melbourne, um, who, when I looked him up, he was actually very close to another quite successful detailer who's actually Fenlab and Kraken certified. And this gentleman wanted to come on board for Kraken, and I said, look. If you can get um, the other guy's permission, um, and, and you guys can work together, and um, that's that's fine. And believe it or yeah. not, eighty percent of the times that's a no. But they actually were happy to work together and um, help grow their businesses together. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing because I, I like to do that with other detailers as well, and just other guys that are in the you know the coaching industry, helping guys get into detailing. Because I feel like it's not competition, you know, it's just more support. That's more awareness in the space in the industry, you know, creating more awareness for the general public. I feel like it just is it goes, you know, works well together. Complements you complement each other. You're growing the industry as a whole. I mean, there is obviously a limit where it's like, okay, we've got too many detailers in this one area now, but yeah. I don't think it's going to ever get to that point because there is a lot of skill and business acumen that needs to be involved to actually be sustainable and profitable and keep growing the business, right? Yeah. Like, And that's where people will start to drop off. Yeah, and also the other thing going back to your original question is that on the customer side, Aaron, they're not loyal to their, their their detailers um i had a customer this morning that called me because i had to actually go and pick up another brand new car from my brother's business partner it's just a little cx30 but from that he's giving me like five cars but mm. um actually there's another one that you'd love it was like a dodge charger with like big 23s on it but um yeah. the it was interesting because I was driving and this other gentleman who, because of my Porsche interaction through FenLab, um, called Porsche and said, oh, I've got a brand new Volvo for my wife. Can I bring it in for a coding? And and Porsche was like, we we like you as our customer, but why would we bring in? And, and they just said, look, speak to speak to Romy. Um, I, I had a conversation with him actually six weeks ago when the car was brand new. I tried to refer him to a guy that was in his area, and he's out all the way in Botany, Aaron, which is at least, I don't know, 30 k's from where I am. And um, he ended up bringing me back today, and he said, I'm bringing the car next week. Doesn't matter. I'll just drop it off. And I said, but <laughs> I referred you to the guys. Yeah, yeah, I don't, mate. They didn't answer whatever. That I just, yeah, I'm, I'm going to bring it to the guy that is the distributor, is the guy that I that we can trust, and he owns the warranty. Um, and yeah, like, you know, I hear these, these stories where clients, like once you make, uh, and that's the other thing I was going to go back to with detailers. Yes, there is a lot coming on board, but reputation reviews, as you know, Mm. following, um, has a, has a lot to do with it. For me, I, I do what I need to do, um, trying to grow a bit into the dealership world and just set myself up to that real next level. And then you want to keep getting ahead. And then you can sort of, you're never at neutral, but you mm. always are managing that that bigger picture. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you mentioned dealerships and it just kind of sparked a, a thought because a, a lot of times people go and buy a new car from the dealership and uh, they'll say that it's been coated. 
you know, but then you always like you go and see the car and it's like, well, this hasn't been coated. This clearly is, or it was like just a sealant, you know, so that what, what, what's your, what's your um, experience in that? You're, so you work with Porsche, do you? Yeah. Porsche Cars Australia. We've got about six dealerships on board now. We've mm. just um, signed a new deal at the beginning of, um, I can talk about it publicly now, beginning of January. So now they're actually, they were on our three-year coding because they were just getting their feet wet. Now the five-year coding has gone out from FenLab. So now they're, they're getting that out there. And I think that's sort of five years, sort of a minimum out there at the moment. Yeah. They're getting yeah. comfortable with that. I've trained each and every dealership. So every, wow. every detailer, if they outsource it, Aaron, I follow the detailers in the big picture deal. It's all covered for the training. So, yeah. um, and also I made sure that there's, um, one of my certified guys within a five kilometer radius from every single dealership in Australia. That's awesome. So you can be rest assured if you're going to buy a Porsche in Australia, it's going to come with a legit ceramic coating on it. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So interestingly enough, by going back to your other point in relation to other dealerships and other coatings, I had a customer come in on the weekend, just driving by Aaron. And it's one of those guys that you least expect that, you know, who is this guy and what do we sort of get to know him sort of a thing. And he's quite a big um, picture guy, big corporate guy. He's part of like a um, a billion dollar company. Um, wow! And um, it's interesting because he just said, "You know what? I looked it up on Google. I was driving through because I just picked up my Ford Ranger. Um, it was the uh, Wild Track. Yeah. So." And he goes, yep, I was in the area, but um, I dropped by some, someone else just down the road. As I said to you, there's, there's a few detailers here. And he said they couldn't really speak English. And I just said mm. none. And then I saw your image and your profile on um, Google. And and even when I when he saw the um, inside my workshop, because I spent like 12 grand on my metallic floor, and he mm. said, yeah, I'm in the right place. And what had happened was – he had bought it and it was like a couple of days old, solid black, of course, uh, my specialty. And he thought he would tidy up some little areas and started like hand polishing these areas. Oh, and, and inside your shop? No, no, no. Before oh, I just, looked at me, yeah, yeah, right. It looked like they were wet sanded. Oh, no, yeah. Because <laughs> the, the, the solid black um, Ford Ranger is, is quite soft. But if you know yeah. how to polish it, you can bring it up like glass. And then I said, look, okay, you know, I'll, I'll give you the quote, but you're going to have to come back a couple of days um, because I'm I'm just fully booked out. Um, and anyway, he, he he came back because he said, look, I'm sorry, I'd, I would have loved to get you to code it, but I'll put it in through my lease and it's covered with the dealership. So he came back on Saturday and he was blown away. Then, you know, it was one of those accidents, Aaron, that just had to happen. And I had left my, you know, the um, the little, uh, I don't want to call it masking tape, but the protective tape, you go around the rubbers. My mm -hmm. one was a bloody Griot's garage one. It was like 20 something dollars a roll. <laughs> I'd left it on the tailgate and he messaged me on the Sunday. He's like, hey, you left this. And I said, oh, you know, look, I don't want to be a tight ass, but if you're in the area, because I'll be there Monday. I was tied up in here mixing some chemicals, won't get into it, but with the graphene, I had the full mask on and everything. Jake, my cool timer, <laughs> goes, oh, because he heard the doorbell, ran down, goes, oh, I, I saw the car, he's he's unhappy. He got it coated and there's all wow. spots all over the bonnet. So then, of course, Aaron, he goes, I'm bringing it back. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, firstly, what, what do you want to charge me? Do the whole bonnet and go back in two stages, a whole bonnet and coat it. And then he goes, we'll go from there. I'm going to try and get a refund. And then he goes, but by the way, I'm going to give you my wife's brand new um, Volvo. And I've also told the directors of my company about you who've got about 10 cars. So, wow. You know, it's just those moments, you know, you, you just, you know, it's sort of yeah. like how the whole yeah. thing got evolved. Um, but yeah. One thing I well, speak, can, you sp can you speak on that? On the yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The one thing I was going to say is, is something in, I guess it's in my DNA, and you you know Aaron better than me, 
that you either have it or you don't. Networking. Mm. Networking for me is I could walk into a room with people. I'd be dressed in similar polo and that, and these guys would be in, you know, full black tie. And I just, I can, I can make them fall in love with me. I can make them, you know, yeah. water from me, whatever. Um, and, and that's, I, that's, 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 yeah, that's how business operates. It's a people, you know, you got, if you want to start business, no matter what it is, you got to be good with people. Yeah. I've you got to be ex, good with people. I got the ex, um, Apple CEO yeah. on my books. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, but going back to the Porsche thing. Going back about seven years ago, I um I got an inquiry from a guy. And by the way, you're going to say, hey, Rom, seven years ago, but you were still employed in corporate. Yeah, I was. And I nearly got fired a number of times because I would do these trips, Aaron, you know, to, to Melbourne and Brisbane. And at one time I was with IBM and I was like, I can speak on it. It doesn't really bother me. It's, it was very exciting for me. And and I was flying into <laughs> Melbourne for work. And then I said, oh, I've got to see my cousins and Rellos. They're getting married and just, you know, do the gray lie or white lie, whatever you want to call it. And I'd buy another day, go out, network, find these details. Mm. There was one that came through and they said, you know, from Melbourne, never heard of him. When I saw the name, I thought, that's a restaurant. That the actual name was actually a restaurant. Ah. Said, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm actually a chef. But my work is is really good. You can you can check. And I thought, okay, so he's named the business the same as as the detailing. And I thought, okay, I, I'll, give, I'll give it a shot. I don't. I'm sort of new at the time, and I'm trying to get my name out there. So um, I went out there. Um, there's two Porsches in the garage. You know, it's it's quite an expensive house, and but. Never judge a book by its cover. I was always, you know, and you don't want to be overly excited. So I started yeah. walking in, met this detailer, and his son at the time, who now is um, is very, very good in everything he does, because obviously he was taught by his dad, but the son at the time was 16. And um, anyway, got to know him. They were telling me, yeah, this is, you know, this is our third or fourth Porsche and we, you know, we have a successful um, restaurant and um, at the time it was a GT3, by the way. Um, and then there were the nice. other, uh, uh, I think it was 718 GTS for his wife. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then, that uh, tends to be the, the lady's car, eh? It is. It is. Yeah. I have a guy coming in with a, with a 718, by the way, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah. It's a GTS. <laughs> hey, I, I, don't, I don't mind. Um, yeah. So I started to, you know, get to know him and I started to waive a couple of things which I'd normally charge for, for my time. And, you know, I, I sort of looked after him on the training. FenLab was still quite new. They kept, you know, sort of saying, you know, Porsche this and Porsche that. And I'm like, yeah, wow, you know. And they said, look, let us let us, let us us make an introduction. And I said, wow, I said, that'd be awesome. But it was to the dealership. Um, and it was actually, um, it was actually Doncaster at the time in oh, Melbourne. Yeah. And I met, I met the DP and at the time as well, Aaron, they, the first time in history, Porsche actually allowed two dealerships to be owned by the one, um, person and business, um, which mm. is which, quite rare. And it's only because of the relationship going back to networking, relationship it's only the relationship that this person had actually with um porsche germany yeah so yeah we we started chatting we got into fenlab fast forward six months down the track we started doing testing by the way at this point i was nowhere near earning anything on on the fenlab side um and then Doncaster started to like it. They were like, "Wow, this is great. We should, you should go and see these guys." And you know, so it's one of those things where the door was opening, and then, like they say, you either you either push it slowly open, and and yeah, get all, the, all the attention, let all of the people know about you, or you you keep it only open for that little bit, meaning that you only deal with one dealership. And you feel that you know, oh, it's either too much work you can't handle it, or you um you don't feel that you know, 
I don't like to use the term, you know, uh, fake it till you make it, and I've never sort of <laughs> lived by that, but I've always sort of pushed myself past and beyond um, any of the expectations and been able to network with the wider people and get people on board and have the support that I have now with, with everyone else. So that's pretty much how it started, and then um, now I pretty much deal at sort of director level in in yeah. dealership because so um i do speak to the dealerships every now and then and if i need to do additional training that's all included mm. but, um yeah like we i think yeah we're going back about six seven years ago wow so that was where that first relationship started and it, and it just started from you you know going around to detail the guy's house so it's amazing at the stepping stone that just going out and washing cars can have, right? Like, and I tell a lot of the guys this, I say, look, don't think of it as just going out and washing cars for your first few cars, you know, this is a stepping stone into business and this can escalate into anything, you know, yeah, anything at all. You use it as a, as a learning curve and just keep growing. So that's, it's amazing. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's quite um, impressive to see what you've done and like where you are now, um, especially with your own, you know, branded ceramic coating that's distributed around Australia and possibly soon to be worldwide. Um, so yeah, that's, that's awesome, man. Um, in terms of like training to learn, um, paint corrections and applying ceramic coatings, do you recommend going and seeing an instructor or like learning, you know, because there's a, there's a big like bit of debate, you know, you can just go out and practice on a car or do you go out and get that qualified instructor to actually show you what to do and the proper techniques to avoid, you know, potential mistakes? I'm going to, I'm going to answer that with my experience and you mm. know, I've in the three the three and a half years that I've been doing the training, because funny enough, um, Aaron, I came up with the with the training platform around COVID, and it and it just grew and it grew, and I've even got messages now from Brisbane and Melbourne. I do have a warehouse in Melbourne that I that I work out of anytime I want. Yeah, but with the experience and the people that have come to me. Um, apart obviously from the whole COVID times, cause I had plumbers coming in that changing, you know, and I thought you might be doing this now, but there's, you know, when you're going to get paid mm. two to $3,000 for plumbing or being an electrician, I'm sure you're going to go back to, to doing that. So, um, a lot of the guys have come in for specifically correction. My correction course has been, um, the most popular. Mm. And a lot of them have had a little bit of experience. Um, you know, you'll you'll hear a lot of the times, uh, on average, they'll be about two or three years in to their detailing, um, mainly mobile. And they would basically say to me, oh, but Rom, I, I just need, you know, the experience. Because I set the agenda and I send them the agenda, you know, Aaron. And I said, but happy to it's their day Aaron it's one on mine mm. change it and I let them work on their own cars which also they can use that as marketing material but nine times out of ten most of them are like I just can't seem to get you know those scratches out or I just can't seem to get past the car within you know a day and a half or whatever the time period is sometimes it's the machines they're using but mm. other, other times it's the technique. Um, in saying that, um, it's great for, I encourage people to go out and, and try and, and get their hands on a machine. Obviously, um, probably not using anything too heavy and not burning paint, but <laughs> there is that slight chance. But most of the guys also, I have, um, are brand new, like brand new to the industry. Um, they've bought a bit of gear. They've done a bit of sort of, I've worked on my mum's and my friend's cars, but now mm. I want to, you know, widen my um, sort of, uh, you know, experience. And I know that um, paint correction and coatings is where I should be 
And obviously, at the end, let's 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 be realistic, Aaron. That's where the money is. Yeah. Um, I had a gentleman come in yesterday. His girlfriend actually, um, his girlfriend actually emailed me and said she um, wanted to buy a gift and buy the training for her, her boyfriend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I got to know this guy, and he he's only been in the country a year and a half. Aaron spoke English pretty well. Um, but actually was an acrobatist, like an acrobatic, um, artist, whatever you want to call them, sort of like those Cirque du Soleil people. Oh, wow. And that's yeah. how he met his girlfriend. Apparently they used to go around all of the P&O crews and so forth. But now here I am with someone that, um, he's actually picked up a trade in Australia as a locksmith. Um, ah. hasn't got any, cause I, I looked at the, it was a VW caddy. I go, oh, great. This guy's. This guy's ready to go, right? Because everybody knows in detailing, the first car you get is 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 sort of a caddy, and then you you go up from there. And he goes, "No, no, no, that's my locksmith gear." And I said, "So you you don't really have much gear?" He goes, "No, no, no, but I've only you know I've been washing and this and that." So essentially, what he should have done is possibly my interior exterior course. But what I did, Aaron, is I stepped. For me, it's also making sure, and I've trained people most of my life. I've, I've I've had teams of people in corporate. I've always trained people in IT. So being able to um, be on their level and make sure they understand before you move on is very yeah. very important. And especially this guy. This guy was 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 a big challenge for me at the beginning. But once I sort of knew um, where he was from and asked the right questions, that's very important. I then um, slowly got into it and, um, you know, I always sort of make the benchmark at about lunchtime and then after lunch I sort of show them an area and I'm like, okay, um, grab the, you know, grab the machine, the 21, and then polish this and do this and that and and they're off and they're balancing the machine and they're listening to what I'm saying. And so going back to what you said, you know, I I do encourage people to have their own experience, but um we we sort of touched on the um uh sorry Aaron yeah I'll, I'll grab a double espresso please thanks with half a sugar sorry <laughs> um and then um going um going back to the people with especially ceramic coatings I I love people um you know excuse the french having the balls to try and use ceramic coatings on their own yeah um make the mistakes then maybe even bring the car in to me, and then it's like, yeah. okay, I'm I'm coming to you for two things: one, to broaden my horizons on the correction side, but also to um, fix these issues that I left, you know. And you can see some of it actually looks like lacquer, because you know. Wow. What, yeah. What are the common mistakes that you see beginners make? Um, a lot of the times they'll um, and and by the way, going on the machines and everything that they have. I, I supply flex and roops, but yeah. I never I never sort of um, downplay their materials, Aaron. It's very important yeah. to, if they have a certain budget, not everyone is sort of like you and I where we can go and invest in X amount tomorrow <laughs> when we don't, you know, we know where our businesses are. But if they've got, you know, I mean, I had two guys the other day turn up. They've got a um, an actual studio they're building with, with their parents. And they're like, I said, so, and they want to do Kraken. And I said, what about your polishing and that? Oh, we'll come back to it. And I said, well, you really should do it together. And they said, okay, we'll, we'll book it in. So they booked it in two weeks later. But I said, by the way, what machine have you got? And they said, Mech Pro, which is a machine <laughs> you buy super cheap for $150. Yeah, yeah, I know the one. You're moving into this six-figure uh, studio. See, I don't, and, and what do I do, Aaron? You can't down and you can't sort of say to them, oh, that's shit and, and sort of yeah. bring that negativity in. Okay, yeah. bring the machine in. But, hey, while you're there, here's a Roops. Here's a Flex. Use it. You know mm. what I mean? Common mistakes that I see is um, obviously buff trailer marks um, because people thought they'd use a rotary and they've left marks in their dried compound. Yeah. I've had a car come in which has been left in the sun and the, the dry compound wasn't wiped off. I've had ceramic coatings left on cars, which are, um, look like, um, you know, dried bits of lacquer. So out comes yeah. the sanding paper. 
Um, so there's a various, the other one is, of course, is most common compound all over the rubbers and the doors because someone's trying to use a five inch machine and jamming it up in, in a little three inch ridge or around the doors. The best part is around the um, piano blacks around the doors. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm I'm open to everything, Aaron. And like I said, even the agenda that I set, um, seventy percent of the times we we change it. And I'm not like the other people that have these group classes and they have their set agendas. And you know, it's like going to the army, and you know, you have to stick by these rules. I don't do that. I'm more than happy to change the agenda the moment. Um, the moment someone comes in and um and and things change you know people want to people want to turn to me hey i had one the other day uh uh rom i um i got these watermarks on the glass um we even tried 3000 grit and i said what i said uh nah, nah man i said that's that's probably not not the right thing to do um why don't we what have you committed to the customer Sorry to get off course here, Aaron, but I'm sure you'll find. No, it. yeah, go go for it. Go, yeah, I want to I hear this. The commitment to the customer is I'm going to do my best. Now, if I show you this glass, we should post the image up. Mm. It, it looks very acidic, and it looks like it's been there for years. And I said to him, "What you've committed that to the customer? Get the car out." No, no, Ron, but I want to fix it. I said, "So you're going to now waste an, another X amount of hours." gone past your budget so let's say for example you're getting 600 for the car or even 1500 because you did a correction and coding mind you you've left the glass to the last bit so the next stage you're going to have to go back out you're going to have to wait and you're going to have to wash the car down again because as you and i both know aaron glass you you don't uh it's not a nice it's always That's difficult messy so i said to him it's difficult a pointer for everyone out there the best and it, and it's actually a dangerous product. You have to wear a mask, but cerium oxide. Okay. It's, it's what glass glazers use, and it'll remove even like those real deep wiper marks, um, pretty deep scratches. Comes in like um like a powder, and you mix it with paste, and make sure you're using a really shitty pad or the Car Pro glass pads, and go yeah. for it. But don't ever. Well, yeah, it. I I never got into glass. Um, correction and never i haven't taught it at all either so i don't actually know too much about it do you want to like give us a quick rundown on 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 why glass is so difficult why it's different to paint and then the process yeah the glass is glass is quite harsh and um you know i'll go through a couple of examples i just had a brand new car my brand new car come in um about four weeks ago and i told the dealer just get off the truck leave it and he goes what do you mean i said just leave it. He goes, Rom, you should see it's dirt. I said, yeah, I know. Writing on the glass and all sorts of stuff, right? And watermarks on the glass. And then I said, this is this is going to be challenging. And um, so one of the first things I did after um, rinsing it down and stuff is I grabbed my, um, my portable uh, Milwaukee. And mm. then in this instance, because the glass stains weren't as bad, I actually used um, the um, PNS um, glass polish uh, compound, um, which is uh, which is pretty. Um, it, it's a pretty good. It's a pretty good uh, product, and um, it's actually called Clarity Cream. I just thought I'd look it up, let people know, and yeah. that can also be done by hand. Um, it's sort of like a creamy jelly type product. But um, I was able to remove everything with with the machine, and you know, with glass, very different to paint, and obviously it can sustain a lot. Um, the heating process in paint is a problem, and we we'll, I always run through when we're polishing paint. Optimal is about thirty five, thirty seven degrees, dependent. Um, we've actually had European paint up to fifty two degrees, Aaron. Um, and wow. We've had no issues with it, um, but then you need to know how hard that clear coat is and know your paint. Yeah, but with glass, the heat factor is not; it, it doesn't sort of set in, and it, and it, and it basically the the glass can take quite a lot of punishing. Um, so therefore, when you go to polish it out, 
And I actually done a lot of research many, many years ago. And someone actually, a glazer, gave me this product, which had very fine um, particles of diamonds in it, believe it or not. Wow. Yeah. And Would have been expensive. Yeah, yeah, it was. I paid uh, for 100 grams, I paid over $300. Yeah. But you use, it's, it's, a, it's a powder and you use a little bit, but it gets very messy. But when you want to dig into the glass, it's very different to digging into paint, especially as as um, acids and and watermarks and even bird crap. If bird craps, and I've I've seen it all, Aaron. I've seen a guy go up to it, just like we've seen people with um, with um, you know getting the Scotch Bright bloody. Uh, 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 Oh, the green sponge thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And then these someone used it on a brand new BMW X5 M on the windscreen. Yeah. And I've looked at it and I said, he's really to damage glass and and scratch it. It really takes a lot. Everybody knows you're driving along and you get a stone chip, and nine times out of ten. It's 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 quite fine, yeah. but what they do is you you'll know that the they drill in and they fill it and that stone chip stops or the good old sticker which actually yeah. blocks it from spreading. Yeah. yeah, but when you you get some deep um some deep marks and th- most of these cars are years and years old or they've just been left outside left outside, um you can actually push that glass and polish it deep and very different to paint because I could have the machine sitting there and just moving a little, little bit. You could even use a rotary on it, but it always mm. comes back, Aaron, to the actual compound and the polish that you're using. You can try seri glass, but in my eyes and my actual opinion from um, using seri glass with the yeah. glass pad, there's a limitation. It gets quite technical and time-consuming. And by the way, guys, if anyone's ever polishing glass, be sure to double-tape all around the frame because if your pad and the compound touches any of the paint or the rubber, you will damage it. Yeah, interesting. Rami, I want to get your your thoughts on uh, a product called Shiny Car Stuff. And um, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but basically what it is, is it's like a lacquer filler type of product that you can just apply over top of swirls and scratches and it just acts as a barrier and m- makes the car look shiny. It's, it's it's not a ceramic coating and you don't need to correct your paint. Obviously, you wouldn't be going out there to apply the stuff on a $150,000 Porsche, yeah. but maybe for those five to ten thousand dollar cars where the customer doesn't want to spend a thousand dollars to get it corrected but they want it to look good what you know is this a an option there are products like this do you know do you know what it is you know i'm looking at it right now and it's actually talking more about like a a clear coat for headlights yeah i'm actually on their website now however there is another product out there called icon icon rock clear yeah. That's similar, very similar, I've, yeah. I've actually got one of the guys in Australia who actually yeah. came to me before he went and done the certification. Yeah. Now, did you – you're probably too young for this. Um, there was a product called Restore Effects. Yeah, no, I don't know. It broke. Yeah. Right? So I'm just going to go back a bit because mm. uh, I'm just going to go back a bit. Hopefully, there's not too much background noise here. Um I'm going to go back a bit because I'm going to tell you guys exactly what my experience is and what I've seen with these type of clear coat products. Um, now, Restore Effects came out and they said, don't polish the car, don't worry, um, but we're going to have to sand it before we put this product on so it, it binds on to the um, to your clear coat. Now, Icon, Broccoli, has actually done that, but you don't actually need to. You don't actually need to sand the car. Now, as far as I can see, it is basically um, very similar to the technology we have in Fenlab Industrial, except their one is a bit more thinner, and it has better leveling, because 
Yeah. Um, the when you go to wipe off something so so thick, uh, it still needs to fill in and settle into those swirl marks. That's right. Yeah. The problem that I've seen in the past, I don't say this is going to happen possibly with Icon Rockley. I don't. It's too new to be honest. But as the years progress and with the Australian conditions. Um, because I deal with people, Aaron, all the way from from Sydney, all the way to Northern Territory. So when I yeah. want things tested, I send them over there. All right. Yeah. Because the UV rating, believe it or not, in Australia is now um, at the same level as Dubai. Wow. And I was in Dubai actually um, in January. But going back to these clear coats and stuff, they're great for the first couple of years, and if you don't mind the fine sort of imperfections because you will notice that it hasn't set down like when you and I polish off yeah. uh, off, off uh, clear coats. Uh, sorry, um, ceramic coats. Ceramics, yeah. yeah. And there'd be high spots yeah. and yeah. Yeah, even, yeah. Even, for example, I I saw the old one, the reflect, the reflect uh, effect, and um, you should look up the history, actually. You, you'll find it quite intriguing. Mm. It still had the actual little tiny marks from the applicator. The little. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. When they go that Wow. Time. Could you see that just like with your naked eye? Up close. Yeah. But then yeah. again, I can, I can see everything, Aaron. I've had brain yeah. cards come in and I said, there's a dent there. There's this mm. there. There's, um, there's a fine line. There's a fine mark. I took out a, I mean, you, if you come into my workshop, I hope you come back, by the way, um, soon. I want you, I want to show yeah. you my workshop. We've got sure. um, nine screen grips installed just on the walls, and we've got another yeah. four on the floor on trolleys. So um, three of the ones on the walls facing um, on one side, you yeah, are three uh, multi-match eights. So, yeah. yeah. Well, lighting's important. It's one of the most important parts, right, of yeah. – but setting up the shiny car stuff it's it's probably great for the first couple of years and people that just want to have the car looking shiny um but what happens and and what i've seen happen with some of these companies is about three or four years down the track possible cracking um mm. you know, some of it may fade some of it you know because you always got to look at what the underlining um product was if your underlining paint was crap and it can't yep. bond properly. The technology hasn't really been, um, you know, possibly tested for that. And our UV ratings, especially if the car sits outside all its time. Yes, so, UV ratings. UV ratings would be a big one, I'd say, because it'd be so much different in different countries yeah. where um, it's been tested. And remember, Aaron, if you have an accident with with our coatings and PPF, it's easy. If you have an accident yeah. with something like this, you easily know the huge difference between where you're going to put this new product on, um, the clear coat, and the rest of the car. Um, and going back to testing and so forth, we tested Kraken in Australia for two and a half years on over 100 vehicles before oh, wow. we went out to market. And the first year, by the way, we got 50 applicators on board without advertising. Wow. Yeah, it's impressive. It's, it is impressive because you don't see – I I, had, I don't really see Kraken around on social media, you know, so it's imp- it, it, it's word of mouth, and word of mouth has got to be one of the most powerful things for this sort of business. Um, yeah. Whether you're selling the product or the serve, delivering the service, word of mouth is just unbelievably powerful, um, and uh, it's reputation and word of mouth. But yeah, um, Romy, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. I think we'll probably uh, wrap wrap it up there. Uh, do you want to like just let let the people, let the listeners know where they can find you, um, and if they're interested at reaching out, doing a one on one with you, um, how Absolutely. they can go about that? So, um, we've well, got Instagram and Facebook, Ultra Fine Car Care, or our obviously our primary site is www.ultrafinecarcare.com.au. Um, our training uh, stuff is there. My, all my contact details are there. Happy to talk to anyone from you know the early young starters all the way up to um, guys that have been in it for many, many years, maybe looking at other options. Um, and I look forward to speaking to you more often, Aaron. And um, man, keep killing it. Absolutely. Hey, it's been a pleasure, Romy. Thanks for this. And uh, yeah, we'll talk again soon. Cheers. Thank you very much. See you later.